glad to certainly have Pastor Ben here with us. Um, we're going to just take a few moments to uh, first start with some prayer. And so in the chat room, um, we invite you to uh, lift up uh, the request, the feeling that you uh, are needing us to um, lift up in this moment. May, may your contribution of uh, your request be the, the act of prayer, the act of prayer that we will all engage. We are in different places, but by the same spirit, we are united, and by the same practices, we are in agreement one with another. And so, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would bless us in this moment with the kind of peace that passes all understanding. I pray, God, that you will give us the gift of peace, uh, the gift of comfort, uh, the gift, Lord God, of confidence that uh, even when the world is failing and falling and, and imploding, we know that you, the creator of all things, of the universe, of heaven and earth, you are not in a point or a moment of crisis. God, you are standing in eternity looking into our particular circumstance and you are still proclaiming the good. And so, God, I pray that the good will invade, Lord God, our space, just like the trauma and the anger and the fear has been uninvited into our reality this week and during this season of COVID and for many of us our whole lives just being aware of the lack of, of, of safety and the lack of justice and the lack of, of, of power and strength. Lord, just like uh, that has invaded our lives without an invitation, I pray right now that the goodness of the Lord, the peace of God, the hope of glory would invade our reality right now. As the tears roll down our faces, Lord God, as the inquiries race across our minds, God, as the, the, the doubt, Lord God, uh, sits in the belly of our stomach, Lord God, and as the rage bubbles, Lord God, uh, within us, I pray, God, that you would invade, Lord, our reality with the overwhelming sense of your presence. Lord God, help us to know and to see, Lord, that, that you are still at work among us. And in many respects, God, you will work through us. So God, do the work even right now. Do the work even right now. Do the work even right now. Lord, we pray for Minneapolis, God. We pray for the Floyd family. We pray, Lord God, for all of our pastors and friends there on the ground, Lord God, who have been enduring, Lord God, the, the ground zero effect of this most recent national tragedy. But God, we also can now look all across this country and in, in less than five days, and dare I say all across the world, we are seeing, Lord God, the rise of anger and indignation and frustration, Lord God, at the failure of our systems, Lord God, to provide the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And so, God, right now, we pray for Chicago. We pray for our own city of Oakland and Berkeley and San Francisco and Richmond, this whole region. We pray for, God, the city of Atlanta. We pray for the cities, Lord God, in the south, Lord God, of of Dallas. We pray for Los Angeles. We pray for New York. We pray for Philadelphia. We pray for uh, Detroit. We pray for all of the cities, Lord God, in our country, Lord, that are, are experiencing the, the open wound and the grief and the pain of another life taken in a way that has triggered and has brought back to the front of our mind the depth of the wickedness of racism. Of, 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 of violence, state violence, Lord God, unaccountable power, Lord God, human hierarchy, Lord God, the othering of those who have been created in your image, the weeping mothers, Lord God, the grieving family members, Lord God, the, 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 the outraged children and youth, Lord God, the, the, the elders who are now re, re, oh, they're, they are living again an era they thought had long passed. God, I pray for my parents. Hallelujah. I pray for my grandparents. I pray for our elders, Lord God, who came through the 50s and the 60s and 
thought that they would never see this again in their lifetime and they are forced to endure two eras of, of white supremacy run amok in the public square. Heal us, Lord God. Heal our country. Heal our land. We lift up our loved ones who are incarcerated. Still today, they are experiencing the crisis of, of the death of uh, an infection of COVID. Our loved ones who are in detention centers and cages still separated from their families. Lord, our relatives, Lord God, who are Asian and who, Lord God, are, 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 are Muslim and, and, and who are uh, religious minorities, Lord, who are still, Lord, being targeted unjustly in this season. Lord God, for all kinds of reasons that are still grounded, Lord, in the inability of all of us to see one another as creating the image of God. So today, God, we pray. We, we lament. We weep before you, God, knowing that you catch all of our tears and put them in a bottle because they are so precious to you. So, God, we ask you have your way. Spirit of the living God, on this Pentecost Sunday, Lord, I know that your spirit is still being poured out on all of us. So, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. On this Pentecost Sunday, Lord, as we are experiencing the divisions, Lord, I pray that the spirit that brings unity, the spirit that brings, Lord God, a, a sense of purpose, a sense of power, a sense, Lord God, of the world that is to be may that power be at least among us and we will say thank you god we'll give your name the praise and we'll give your name the glory lord even while we go through this trial lord we know that you are with us and so we invite you into this time of lamenting into this time of healing into this time lord god of acting i pray god that you will bless and give us your spirit in jesus name we pray amen and amen and amen. God bless you, people of the way. It is indeed the case that for many of us, these tears have been flowing. The, this rage has been bubbling, and we have had to uh, imagine what does it mean for us to respond in, in this moment, not with a business as usual response, but we all know uh, that in times past, we have certainly uh, made sure our worship experiences uh give space for the Holy Spirit to meet us where we are and not attempt to uh, abandon, Lord, the, 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 the materiality of, of our experience and, and where we are uh, postured and positioned in history. And so I invite you to share this uh, next hour or so. We're going to go a little long today, not terribly long, but we're going to go a little long because we want to invite some healing opportunities and a conversation into this space. Uh, Dr. Karina Montag is going to uh, join us in a few moments to uh, offer a conversation about trauma and about healing, um, knowing that these things are not uh, in competition with our faith. I asked Pastor Ben to come and join us uh, because all of us know that uh, his work and his ministry uh, has, has continued to expand and extend uh, the, the reach of God's uh, love and commitment to justice far beyond the four walls of our churches, um, of our religious communities. And so I thought it'd be great for him to come and we just uh, have a bit of a conversation about what this moment means and, and perhaps how we are to respond. And so share uh, this, this, this virtual service. Uh, there are people in your life who want to know what to do. There are people uh, in your life who want to know how to respond. And so I want to invite you uh, on YouTube and on Facebook, text this link and tweet this link and, and let's bring more of our loved ones into the room today and uh, let us invite the spirit on this Pentecost Sunday to fall fresh on us as we uh, share in a time of lament, healing and action. And so uh, let's appreciate Pastor Ben as he is here. Certainly uh, he's no stranger to us. He is my uh, younger big brother, as we say. Uh, he has the trying voice. to get rid of the big, the big. <laughs> well, and he ha he ha he has the voice that I've always wanted. Amen. I have all the trouble, and he has all the bass. Um, but uh, we we are so so grateful um, to have him here to say hello to the people. It's good to be back uh, here at the way and hang out with all the family. Um, grateful to God 
that we are all still in the land of the living. I know this has been an incredibly difficult week. I know it's been for you. I know it certainly has been for me. And I'm just thankful that we can have another moment to sit back and reflect and think about how the Spirit is moving us uh, to think about how we take another step forward into sometimes what continues to feel like a, a dark tunnel yes. that we're trying to travel through. I mean, it certainly feels like this is a Groundhog Day experience. Mm -hmm. I don't know many of you are familiar with Groundhog Day where uh, Tom Hanks was in the movie and he just woke up and kept repeating the same day over mm -hmm. and over again. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you feel like uh, we we are caught in a in a in a bad loop, if you will? You know, I, I wrote a, a little uh, op-ed a little bit late um, towards the week, and I was wrestling with this with you know kind of Paul's writing of um, if God is for us, who can be against us? Mm. And I was kind of sitting in the tension of that and saying, man, God, I'm not trying to doubt that you're for us, but the reality of who is against us is so palpable and real. And so it does feel a lot like Groundhog's Day where I continue to find myself at times like uh, that scripture says, how long, Lord? How long? You know, at what point will our enemies, and I oftentimes don't like to call people enemies. I like to say people who might oppose us. But I mean, this situation has really, and the repetition of it has, has verified that we have some real enemies, particularly the sun-kissed children of God, those of us that come from the continent Africa that are and have been oppressed in this country for 400 years, um, we have some real enemies. And to me, it really is calling on us to think about how do we have a faith that's thick enough um, to not cause us to try to escape the realities of life, but to have a faith that's thick enough to give us the kind of power to engage at some of the hardest moments in life. And I think we're at one of those harder moments now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, do, I do certainly acknowledge this truth that um, all of us even who have walked with the Lord, dare I say all our lives, um, are in this moment experiencing a level of um, at times abandonment, mm -hmm. you know, where you're asking God, where are you? Mm -hmm. And and I know for many of us, it did not take this tragedy to happen for us to ask God, where are you? Some of us have had our own tragedies mm -hmm. that have happened. Uh, we are in COVID. We are still in the age of coronavirus. Yeah. We know loved ones this week who've lost their parents and, and family members to coronavirus. And the, the tragedy of this moment is that not only are, are black folks dealing with a pandemic, not only are Latino folks de dealing with a aggressive uh, a law enforcement apparatus to deport and detain them, and even those who are quote unquote citizens are still being racially profiled, right. not only are Asian loved ones and our religious minorities being unfairly targeted by all kinds of folks uh, blaming them for something that they don't have any, any control over. Now we are all terrorized, literally, by this video of the life of a man being snuffed out right before us. Um, what, what is your thought about, about just this wickedness of the systemic structural police violence that continues to proliferate? Do you have a theological kind of, kind of uh, uh, just rift on that? Because I think some of us are trying to make theological sense of this. When we say theological sense, we're just trying to figure out Man, God, is this is this your will? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, a few years ago, um, you talk about Groundhog's Day. When we were coming out of Ferguson, I had to figure out how to read the scriptures differently mm. in order to make meaning of what was happening. And, and we kind of came up with this line uh, called a Ferguson hermeneutic. Yes, sir. Right? And we I started saying, that. what would it look like if we started reading the scriptures and the stories through the lens of Ferguson through the lens of our time and our moment and, and seeing what might, you know, happen. And I think, you know, to me, some of the hope is that although this moment feels so foreign and uh, despairing, I can get from the scriptures the reality that this moment has happened many times over before. Mm. And, you know, when I think about the story of Moses, we have somebody who was raised in empire Talk about who, that. who, you know, ultimately realized that although he was raised with privilege, he at a certain point tried to abandon his privilege. He let his anger actually get the best of him and he killed one of the oppressors once he realized he was Hebrew. 
and he, he fled Egypt like many of us do when we flee the tough parts of our early lives. And he went and recreated himself in the suburbs of Midian, you know, and, and had his wife and a couple kids and, you know, maybe had a little jackal, you know, as the dog. And he was hanging out, you know, being a shepherd and, and doing his thing, you know, like a lot of us shepherd folks and take care of people, just trying to enjoy his life, mm. right? And, and I love in his story because it says that Moses was... Being a shepherd, he was doing his nine to five. He was walking up a hill and he saw a bush that was on fire mm. and it was not being consumed. Mm. And, and the scripture says that when Moses saw the bush, he turned aside to see why is the bush burning? And the scripture says that when God saw Moses turn aside, my, my. God spoke to Moses from the bush. And, and one of the things that's hit me about this moment is we equally all have come up through this empire. Some of it has given us different levels of privilege to some of us. Some of us are, are not and have not had any privilege in the empire. There's too many of us that are actually living right now under the lash of empire. But some of us who have the opportunity to drift off, or maybe you got a little bit of distance from some of the pain of empire, God might be trying to get us to turn aside, not from bad things, wow. but from good things. Moses was just doing his job. He wasn't doing a bad thing. But God might be trying to get us to turn aside from good things wow. to see why the bush is burning and not being consumed. And if we can pay attention to the bush, mm. we can hear God talk to us about God's heart for the oppressed. Yes. God says, I have heard the oppressed. You haven't heard them yet, Moses, but I have. Wow. I've seen the pain of the oppressed. You haven't seen them yet, Moses, but I have. Wow. And I'm speaking to you from this bush to say, if I hear it and if I see it, I need you to go back to empire mm. and confront what is happening to my people. I think it's important for us in this moment to have eyes to see the burning bush, mm. that police station on fire mm. in Minneapolis. Yes is a burning bush yes that quick trip that was on fire in ferguson yes. is a burning bush yes y'all hear what i'm saying god is speaking to us from the bush yes saying i see what's happening to my people in minneapolis i see what's happening to george floyd i see what's happening to brianna taylor i see what's happening to stephen taylor right here in san leandro god says will you turn aside I'm not trying to yell and preach. That's your you, job you today. You do know, Doc. But You're doing it. Are, are you willing to turn aside? Yes. Not from bad things. Yes. From good things. From good things. So you can hear my heart for the people. I mean, I want us to sit in that for a second. Because we are being asked to turn aside from some things. We are being asked to turn aside from some things. On your screen, you'll see an image that Pastor Ben was moved to, to, to pull out as a modern burning bush. Pastor Tanisha was moved earlier this week to name this season of Pentecost as little fires everywhere. Even before all this started happening, put that image back on the screen, please. I want you to look at this image and, 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 and Pastor Ben, I just want you to, to maybe just say a word about what moved you to, to, to see that burning building as a burning bush. And what then is our responsibility to ensure that what we are seeing in that building does not become an occasion for us to hurt those whose cries we have not yet to hear. You know, I, I think the, the, the deepness of spirituality and faith is that there is always another world happening behind the world we see. You know, there's, there's another story. <laughs> say, say that again, uh, sir. The, 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 the deepness, the depth of faith yes, sir. is that there is always another world happening behind the world we see. 
right? You, you got to remember when in, 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 in some of the Jewish scriptures where, you know, there was a, this moment where all of these enemies had surrounded, I think it was Elisha, yes, sir. right? And, and, and his servant, uh, Gehazi, came out and all he could see was the, the enemy surrounding them. And Elisha said, uh, he prayed and said, Lord, open up his eyes so he could see. And surrounding the enemies that were surrounding him yes. were chariots of fire. Yes. We back to this fire back again. Back to the fire, now. Right? On Pentecost so, Sunday, on Pentecost I want Sunday. you to know that the fire falling from heaven. It's here already. It's all, come on. If you can get eyes to see it. Come on. So I think in this moment, you know, listen, we all struggle with doubt. I've struggled with doubt. I think in these moments, maybe it's an opportunity for some of us that are struggling with our with doubts, we're trying to figure out how can the world be this messed up and God be omnipotent and God be omniscient? And how, how can these two things live? I don't have the answer, but I do believe if we'll allow the spirit to give us some eyes to see. Eyes to see. The world behind the world. The world behind the world. I, I just got to believe it. Maybe, maybe this faith is really not about certainty at all. Mm. Maybe it's actually about leaning into the mystery. Yes, the mystery. The Come mystery, on now. you Come know, on. Come and, on. and the miracle yes. is going to lie in the mystery. Yes. Which means that we just got to be willing to see there is something else there. The only way that I can believe that black people have survived 400 years of oppression and, and enslavement and violence is because the Hebrews survived 400 years Come on. of enslavement in the empire because if God was present for the Hebrews then, yes, sir. then God's got to be present for black people now. Yes, sir. And I don't understand it. I don't understand. But I think we got to keep working because the scripture says, faithful is he who has called us who also will do it. Yes. So it's not my job to do it. No, sir. It's my job to be faithful. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This Pentecost Sunday, where we celebrate the birth of the church, as we look at the book of Acts chapter 2 and Stand with our eyes firmly fixed on the year 2020, a year unlike no other. Could it be that this season of Pentecost, where we have fire all around us, fire burning on the inside, fire burning on the outside, Fire that we can't see. Fire that is intended to fuel us, purify us, empower us, warm us, but not consume us. But not consume us. The Hebrew boys said it like this. We're not going to bow down to your idol. So you got to throw us in this fire. Because <laughs> we believe our God is able. But if he does not deliver. We still. We still. I want you to know, child of God, that if God does not deliver you, your family, from physical death we still will not be consumed by the fire of despair, of hopelessness. I want you to, I want you to just say that. I won't, be, I won't be consumed by that fire. I won't be consumed by this fire. The fire won't consume me. And as the fires burn, as Pastor Ben has powerfully stated, I will turn aside. Now, Ben, ben I, I want you to give us a caution about our response in this moment to the fires that are burning across this country because some of us may misinterpret the fires as hopelessness when actually the fire may be 
a deep expression of pain? What should the church do to respond to the fires around us? What should we as people of faith do to respond to the fires around us? Dare I say, even those setting the fires, we're, we're, we're knowing that some of the folks setting the fires are our white relatives, many of them who are at a point of anger and frustration and, and, and they themselves are being left behind. They're all racist out here setting fires. What should our response be as relates to the relationship between people, property, bodies, buildings, the fires? Maybe give us that because we're going to take a few moments to offer a quick prayer on, 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 on how we respond to these fires. Our, our call is people who are continually trying to follow this Palestinian Jew that lived on the underside of the Roman Empire mm. is to continue to love people, to stand up against injustice, to not be overwhelmed by the moments that we're in, but also not to become the very thing that we abhor. One of the worst things we could do in an empire mm. is to ourselves become imperial. And so I think we say, have say, to think say, about say, say that one, more one of the worst things we can do in an empire is to become imperial. We're not called to become empire. We are called to overthrow empire with kingdom. Yes. God's kingdom comes. Yes. God's kingdom yes. comes. Yes. God's will be done. So let us be the ones that help usher in that kingdom, which is going to mean that we're going to have to get out there like Jesus did and cleanse some temples. Mm. <laughs> Talk about that. Cleanse, we, Jesus, cleanse. Jesus, he wasn't trying to tear the temple down. He wanted to cleanse it. Yes, sir. So we don't need to tear our cities down, but they do need to be cleansed. Talk about that. And though. sometimes a part of that cleansing is not cute. I know everybody's upset with some of some of our young people, not not some of the folks who are trying to use it for their own game, but some of the folks not that excited about some of our young people cleansing our communities. You worried about Target instead of the Target that this government has put on the backs of your relatives. Come on now. So we need to be people who follow Jesus, who are focused on people, not property. People, not property. Bodies, not buildings. Mm. And let us be the ones who, at the end of the day, we say we follow Jesus. Listen, Jesus, if there's anything he asked us to do, it was to follow him. And he said, no greater love has anybody yes, sir. than to lay down your life for your friends. So let us turn aside. Let us not get caught up in the dumb stuff. There's a lot of things we got going on online where people can step in. Y'all saw the video. And so there'll be many ways for people to get involved. But let us turn aside. And, and maybe I'll just finish with this. I was talking with one of my rabbi homies, Rabbi David, here in, in Oakland several years ago about Moses. Some of y'all heard me say this before. And I, I, I told him I was talking about this Moses story because y'all been thinking about this for about five years now. <laughs> and, and, and I asked Rabbi, I said, Rabbi, do I have it right? He said, you, you got it right. One thing you're missing, that for us as Jews, our, our scriptures teach us that the bush was always on fire, but God was waiting on somebody to see it. So right now, we got the Minneapolis bush that's burning. Yes, sir. But what other bushes are burning around what you? Other bushes what are bushes burning. are burning in your family? Yes. What bushes are burning in your neighborhood? Yes. Let's allow, what bushes are burning, I'm not going to preach, in your own heart? Yes. Let's allow God to give us eyes to see it. Turn aside to the burning bushes, and I believe God's going to let us all live free. Ha, pray us out. Just pray us out. Lord, we want to just offer up to you ourselves, our doubts, our fears. Lord, we, we don't have no reason to try to fool you because you know it all. So you know what we're struggling with and we offer it all to you. Lord, our community, our people is in deep crisis. So God, we pray for the courage to be your people, to stand up against injustice. Lord, give us a courage to stand up for each other. Give us, Lord, the capacity to create more belongingness for others and a wider circle of human concern. Remove the fear that paralyzes us and give us the faith that empowers us. And as you do it, we'll give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. 
Lord, do it for us, and we'll do it with each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Pastor Ben has blessed us. He's blessed us. He's blessed us. And I, I just hope that you appreciate him in, in the chat. Just say thank you to Pastor Ben. And I want you to uh, type in the chat, bringtheheat.info. Bringtheheat.info. This is uh, our strategy, uh, one of many, certainly, to respond faithfully as people of faith in this moment. We want to mobilize uh, certainly our church and, and many other churches that we are in relationship with to imagine what does it mean to uh, bring the heat of uh, radical transformation of our social structures, particularly those that relate to the criminal justice system, to our, our system of policing, to our economy, the way our local budgets are are, are leveraged uh, for public safety primarily through an enforcement and a punitive framework towards black and brown people. We want to bring the heat to radically transform. We want the fire of transformation to, to, to touch the police departments and the officers and leaders in our cities that steward on our behalf these departments. And so um, we're going to invite you to go to bring the heat say a quick word about what we're going to do with that this week bring the heat.info go there click get involved leave your information so that by tuesday you're going to get some information about next steps this coming thursday at four o'clock if you could make it four o'clock pacific 7 p.m eastern we're going to be launching the first bring the heat virtual town hall heat is an acronym for hiring equipment accountability and training we are going to dismantle this police state and we're going to create a public safety system that is worthy of God's creation. Go ahead and check into that. We'll see you on Thursday online with some practical next steps that we can all begin to engage with. So bring the heat.info. This has been uh, pulled together by Ben, myself, and dozens of pastors and uh, formerly incarcerated people and frontline organizers and legal minds. Uh, scholars in race and implicit bias and uh, these aren't just some some uh, warmed over ideas the, these are some of the most cutting edge efforts that we've been uh, pulling together for easily the last decade so we're not starting from scratch if there is a blessing in the curse of this being Groundhog Day it is that we know what works and now we just need to do our effort to uh, educate ourselves to scale it up. Uh, in the chat, please uh, go ahead and, and uh, offer up some thanksgiving and praise to God for this great gift of Pastor Ben, and, and uh, we're going to be hearing more from him in the days to come.